Hello, welcome to this curated playlist compiled for the 6th International Anarchist Studies Network Conference held online from the 2nd to the 4th of September 2020. This playlist will focus on songs by punk bands from Northern Ireland that relate in some way to the conflict, both during the Troubles itself and the post-Good Friday Agreement peace, and will especially highlight those songs that approach conflict issues from an anarchist-informed perspective. A quick note on methodology, this process of mixing clips from punk songs relating to particular themes in Northern Ireland puts the musical and lyrical expression front and centre, while highlighting key strands and tropes that run through the songs. Within a limited running time, and with my own exposure to and preference for particular bands, this is a partial overview, but hopefully it contributes something to your appreciation of punk in the north of Ireland. In Ulster, punk mattered and matters in ways that it does not elsewhere. Northern Ireland society is divided deeply along national ethno-religious cleavages and punk provided and provides an alternative identity and cultural space that is not just non-sectarian but is actively anti-sectarian. There has frequently been an explicitly anarchist grounding behind these critiques of sectarianism and conflict and these anarchist analyses have sustained into the post-conflict peace and the attendant neoliberal economic transformations. One common trope throughout the history of punk songs here is to highlight the physical violence of everyday life. This includes accounts of terrorist atrocities, attacks by the police, army and paramilitaries and a semi-celebratory focus on rioting. in East Belfast on Tuesday night, these Land Rovers were the targets. The vehicles were attacked by masked men, hit by bricks, bottles and petrol bombs. Damn you! Die! Run 
Little Fingers is the biggest name that springs to mind when thinking about early punk bands and the troubles in Northern Ireland, and we've already had one song by them. Their engagement with the conflict is somewhat qualified since most of their conflict-related lyrics were written by an English journalist and they moved to London early in their career, but nonetheless, their fiery invective was an inspiration to many. While Stiff Little Fingers were not an anarchist band, their lyrics laid down some of the groundwork for the anarchist punk rejection of both sides of the sectarian divide. Most other early punk bands in Northern Ireland avoided singing about the Troubles conflict, which isn't to say they were apolitical. A studied ignorance of the civil war on your doorstep is not without its political significance. However, even these bands had some connections with the anarchist movement, in as much as some of the gigs they played were benefits for the Just Books Anarchist Bookshop, and the Good Vibrations Record Shop and Label had loose anarchist associations, and indeed the shop's upstairs neighbour on Great Victoria Street was a community printing press run by Dave Heinemann, who went on to release records as Hit Parade on Crass Records, and one of his songs provides the bed track here. The anarchists at Just Books and the Belfast Anarchist Collective started a Saturday afternoon punk club called the Anarchy Centre on Long Lane in 1981, with seminal British anarcho punk bands such as Crass, Dirt and Poison Girls all playing here, and these bands were a direct inspiration on the wave of anarchist bands in Belfast in the 1980s and beyond.
Most, if not all, of these bands were closely associated with the Warzone Collective. This was one of the most important initiatives by the anarchist punks during this period. And through the Warzone Collective, they established uh, first a practice space in Donegal Street, before going on to set up a gig venue, recording studio, practice space, social centre and vegetarian cafe from 1986. This space, called Gyros, functioned continuously in a few locations until 2003, before being re-established in 2010, the most recent social centre closed in 2018. While the murderous violence of the Troubles has largely, though not completely, subsided since the 1998 Good Friday Agreement, the core impetus of the Warzone Collective persists. Northern Irish society is marked by continued segregation and increasingly sectarian social attitudes, most prominently among young people, a stormant assembly explicitly premised on entrenched sectarian opposition, and a renewed focus on the border question and the threat of violence as a result of Brexit. Anarchist punks have been explicitly critical of this post-conflict peace, and while some of the emphases of the critique have necessarily shifted in the post-conflict period, the core rejection of both sides persists. To flip the Good Friday Agreement's parity of esteem principle on its head, this is a parity of scorn towards both the Irish and British ethno-national traditions from an anarchist-informed punk perspective. <laughs>
work at service Must come at a cost I saw the news this morning But who's a 20 guys and jobs lost Working class must pay The work that I'm not say The work that I'm not say The work that I'm not say Contemporary dynamics of the conflict in Northern Ireland have been characterised as a culture war. It is less murderous, for now, but sectarianism is increasingly entrenched and reconciliation seems a distant prospect. The punk scene in Belfast is an alternative countervoice in that culture war. With its focus on cultural production and creative resistance, it continues to provide an anti-sectarian space which is explicitly critical of the sectarian piece of the Good Friday Agreement and the neoliberal piece characterised by rapacious gentrification. As we've seen, the close relationship between anarchism and punk in Ulster has been crucial in developing this alternative to sectarian war and sectarian peace. I hope this presentation has been enjoyable. I look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you.